Hi guys, Ryu here with another tooth for Blender and today let's talk about setting up um, Blender from scratch. The first thing you need to understand about uninstalling Blender is that you need to not only uninstall Blender from your drive as a program, so you go to uninstall and then you, you know, uninstall program in the uh, Windows uninstall tool, but you need to purge the config folder and that's really important. So you need to go to your um, C drive, local disk, users, your name, update, roaming, blender, foundation, blender. Now in that folder, you're going to have respective um, folders for each blender version that you have on your computer. I have three, so I got three folders. In this case, we're going to be uninstalling and reinstalling 83. So let's get rid of it. So this folder, it contains um, config and also scripts with add-ons and uh, we're gonna purge all of this okay we're just gonna simply delete that from the hard drive and it's really important if you're not going to do this you might get some python errors it's quite possible so if you in install a fresh blender right and you're using add-ons let's say using hard ups and box cutter and you change hard ups and box cutter to a new version you just un you, you know uninstall them in blender and you install new ones and you got problems 95% of issues you can fix by actually purging that config file. So that's important step. Now, once I remove um, the Blender from my hard drive, I'm going to proceed with installation of Blender. That's the default interface of Blender 2.83. Now let's clean this up because it's a complete mess. Now, first of all, I'm going to press A and delete all this junk because I don't need it. Then I'm going to hide this. Now let's go to interface, so preferences and interface. And let's make this bigger because I cannot bloody see anything. So 1.3 at least for my screen. The next is themes, okay? In 3D viewport, I wanna change a few settings. First of all, my selected object to be white because it's easier to see. The same will go for um, active object. So this one and also vertex select, edge select. On the colors here, uh, what I want is edge seam red is fine. Then edge sharp, I want it to be, actually white is fine as well. So let's go for white, saturation zero. Edge crease, this could be actually uh, sort of bluish or purplish. And this should do. Now what I wanna turn off is this. So, when you have flipped faces, right, in, in Blender, um, I want to see only the red ones, right? So, I can switch this alpha to zero. So, in this case, if I leave the preferences and go to my cube, right, go to face mode, um, no add-ons, so I have to do it manually. And then I'm going to go to um, uh, to flip my faces, right? And if I'm going to turn the face orientation, so you will see that uh, I cannot see this blue um, blue outline, you know, I mean this blue color. Usually I have like a really, I poke in blue. All I see is red and that's all I want because I don't need the blue stuff, I just need the red one. And that's why um, this one is set to alpha zero. So it's gonna be invisible. Next thing is um, grease pencil seven, uh, vert size seven, dot size, um, Face dot size seven and origin size seven. So now if I'm gonna go to cube right and go to edit mode, I can actually see those words. Yeah. Viewport is next. I'm switching samples to sixteen and my texture to four. So it just improves quality of viewport basically. Navigation. Orbit around selection. It's a must. Auto perspective off. I hate it. And auto depth. It's a must. Key map. Switching space to search. This is a large button. It's really easy to hit. So I hate it when it's been set to play. I don't do much animations. System is next. Each machine is different. So you need to sort of um, maybe time your renders and see how things work. But if your CPU is pretty decent, you might want to set it to both. Undo steps, 200 at least, because um, I don't want to suffer. And let's go to save and load. That's fine. Uh, file path, yes. Now, if you have a scratch disk, um, then you might want to um, set these 
So I have a scratch disk that's a dedicated SSD for um, for Photoshop and Blender. Um, so um, I'm gonna just simply apply these here. So render output and my render cache. So here render output done. And switch this off to from auto because it just pisses me off when I cannot do it manually. Now add-ons. Most important add-ons from Blender, right? So loop tools. That's the first one, okay? F2. Edit mesh tools. Node Wrangler. 3D print box, which is fantastic for uh, uh, toolbox, I mean, which is fantastic for fixing uh, non-manifold geo. Copy attributes menu. Important. Extra curve objects and extra mesh objects. I actually like these. Uh, quite useful sometimes. Then I'm going to drop my personal add-ons. So uh, let's grab the add-ons. And uh, from the top. Hard ops. You cannot live without hard ops. It's just illegal. That's what it is. Next, box cutter. Next is... Uh, let's actually go in the order. Um, from the top to bottom, so I'm not going to get confused. Batch ops. Bezier Mesh Shaper. Uh, Decal Machine. Very important. Kit Ops. Also important. Machine Tools. Gift from Gods. That's what it is. Uh, so is Mesh Machine actually. Mesh Materialize. It's a new add-on. It's actually really cool. Um, I got it yesterday and it's just fantastic. It's a lot of fun. Now, myth tools I'm gonna have to install manually. Power save. That's also a great add on. Quadrimasher. Screencast keys. So you can see what I'm pressing. Sketch style. I use it occasionally. It's actually pretty cool. It's the same add on from the same guy who developed KitOps. And UV Pack Master too. Well, if you're doing UVs, that's, uh, that's, your, that's your friend there. And also have Mira tools, but it needs to be installed manually, so I'm gonna skip that. Save preferences, we're done. Now, viewport. I'm gonna change this to 0.01 .01 because it's just too close. And um, this one might be actually too 2K. You might get some uh, shading problems with these settings, but uh, you know, um, your mileage might vary. But uh, when I um, have my cube, let's say invert, I'm in invert mode, right? Um, it's really difficult to um, to get so close to it without this setting because if it's gonna be to 0 0.1 I'm gonna get clipping you see so it's really important for me to get this setting from the get-go and get it to zero I like I like working in in close quarters so that's important you could set it manual if you don't have hard ups um, so you could go here to cavity and shadow what I'm gonna do simply is go to um, hard ups settings and viewport and AVHQ, and this will set my uh, my cavity, my shadows. Next thing, go to EV turn on bloom. I think the shadow side 2K, right? That's fine. Let's change these samples to 200 because because why not? And let's go to cycles, of course, GPU. And here we're gonna set it to 200, 128 viewports. Then light path is gonna be six. Uh, three is fine. Gloss is three, four maximum, four. And I'll leave it at zero. But if you go with volumetrics, you might wanna bump it up. Clamping, I'm not interested. I don't really think I need caustics, but I'm gonna leave it hair off. I don't need it. Film transparency. I want my background to be transparent, my HDRI, so I'm gonna set it to transparent. And color management, I'm good. Now let's go to let's go to settings here. 34401. That's my monitor settings, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, this one needs to be 29 at least. This one is going to be TIFF, 16, no compression, metadata, and note. And you can insert here your, for example, name. So, 
it's gonna bake it to your uh, to your files PG oh yes we need to go to data and switch off denoising data because we're gonna be using compositor so let's do it now actually use nodes split this and shift a filter denoise boom filter and glare now remember to switch this off when you do an EV because you're gonna get double bloom with this streaks to fog low and let's connect this correctly because it isn't and the noise in normal and normal albedo done perfect now shading let's go to shading and uh, world and let's click on all right our node wrangler is not working okay let's turn it on save preferences and now we can control t to add these nodes for our HDRI, so Control T. Then I'm gonna go to my um, to my HDRI file. So here and add my favorite HDRI, which is a flat HDRI, which is important to have flat lighting, so you don't get distracted with sunlight and stuff. Flat lighting is really important if you want to get uh, basically um, a neutral reading on materials and reflections, etc., and colors. If you add sunlight, it's gonna get add color, right? Um, I'll give you an example. If I go to my uh, to my art station, right? This thing. Now lighting, I mean materials haven't changed in this image. This material and this material is the same thing. The only thing I change is light. So you can see how much light can influence materials, right? And colors. So that's why I'm using a flat lighting. And now collections, because I don't want to, you know, mess about with this thing. It's just too annoying to do it every time. So, um, right click and new. I'm going to add render. And next thing is going to be new and backup. And this one's going to be main. Now I don't need to worry about cutters because you see I'm using hard, um, I'm using box cutter, right? So if I go to box cutter, I'm gonna get cutter collection added automatically by box cutter. So I don't need to worry about that. So let's delete it. Perfect. Now let's go to front view. So with my machine tools, go to front view. I like I like it to be tilted, sort of like uh, kind of a front view, but sort of you know from the side. I'm gonna set my box cutter now. So let's go to behavior and active only all these uh, on auto and then my recut because I love some recut. Now then let's go to let's go here and I need these three. Now next thing is going to be size of this grid. So it's gonna be 0 0.1. So when I'm gonna use grid for my my box cutter it's not gonna be so huge I mean it's not gonna, yeah it's not gonna be so huge it's a bit more uh, refined the default one is just massive yeah so 0 0.25 it's just way too big you know I, I don't find it uh, comfortable to work with so I like it to be set to something smaller let's go back to add-ons because there are a few more things we need to set up decal machine first of all let's make it bigger and I need to make this uh, into four rows because I have so many decals that it just doesn't fit the screen. Size of... This actually default is fine. This one needs to be larger. Now, go to decal creation. I'm going to change this to my uh, data. So... Uh, next thing it will be this folder. So I need to change it to... Um, now it works like this. If you have different versions of um, uh, of Blender and each of them has a decal machine, you will need to install decals to each Blender uh, add-on folder. So decal machine and KitApps provide a folder that you can pull decals from, right? So I'm gonna go decals and simply accept and I'm done. Now KitApps. Ketops is another one that needs to be uh, needs to have the settings. So you're gonna go here to file path and click on this thing and the same thing. So desktop blender 
add-ons and master and accept save done so now if i leave my box cutter i have my decals and they're gonna be pulled from uh, one folder on the on the drive another thing is that in power save i want to have auto save copy to set on and the last thing i'm gonna switch is back here to ev so and this is too big and yeah that's perfect so default save startup file and i'm done that's it guys hope you enjoyed the vid it's a very quick video on how to set up your blender from scratch including the add-ons and these were add-ons mostly for hard surface modeling because that's what i do take care and talk to you next vid